We know, we know, this isn't some wild hypothesis that if you can make people who are absolutely poverty stricken relatively rich, they start to care about the environmental future. And so what that means is the fastest way to environmental sustain sustainability is by the amelioration of poverty. And the best way to do that is to provide low cost energy. And potentially the best way to do that is with nuclear energy. I've thought for years that it's utterly insane that we're not pursuing nuclear energy like at, at a rate that's as fast as we can possibly move. And I have a lot of questions about simplicity of design. In this thought-provoking video, renowned psychologist and author Jordan Peterson discusses the crucial link between alleviating poverty and achieving environmental sustainability. Peterson argues that by lifting people out of absolute poverty, they become more concerned about the environment's future. He advocates for providing low-cost energy as the fastest route to poverty reduction, emphasizing nuclear energy's potential role. When I've been thinking about this, because I've been thinking about the relationship between energy and the environment for a long time, so when I've been thinking about this, a number of things struck me. The first is the absolute power density of nuclear fuel, which is unsurpassed by any standard except with for fit fusion, and we're not at fusion levels yet, although I talked to someone about that recently, and that'll be released quite soon. And so then I thought, well, we've obviously had something approximating microreactors that are reliable for a very long time because we've been using nuclear subs for what? How long now? 70 years? Is it at least 70 years? Yes. It, it, right? I mean, so that's a long time. And they fit in a submarine, so they're not very big. And submarines move around, so they're obviously portable. And the people on them don't die from radiation poison. And they can stay underwater forever. So, And they're obviously extraordinarily reliable. So then I keep thinking, well, why the hell aren't they everywhere? Nuclear is the safest of all energy forms. Like if you, even safer than, if you look at deaths per gigawatt hour, nuclear beats out wind and it beats out solar, surprisingly. Right. It is the yeah. safest already. And that's not even considering that SMRs and microactors are still safer than new big civil power plants. Right, and right. I, I, and you know, things like Fukushima or Three Mile Island get brought up, but I have to point out that nobody died in those in those situations, and that really it's just a cleanup operation. I don't want to trivialize, mm -hmm. it, but um, it's. I think it. Hu human psychology is interesting. I think radiation might mm -hmm. be more intimidating because it's a danger you can't see, and so you can't understand the magnitude of that danger. Consequently, it's not like a tiger in the room you can see and you can assess. And, and that, that maybe has been an impediment. Okay, well, okay, so that, that's, well, well, we can understand that. I mean, a huge part of the problem that any company has to solve is the marketing problem. That's often 85% of the problem, even if it's a complex technical problem. And so and then what about, what about government impediment or other like sociological impediment specifically to your progress? Where, where, are, you, where are you getting resistance and where are you seeing like a well-paved way forward? Well, the, the good part is that when we, we did see a lot of resistance, but resistance in the form of infrastructure not being in place. And just to take an example of another company, and they probably won't mind me saying this, is that um, NewScale were the first company to license an SMR. In fact, they're the only ones in the world to do that. Um, but they became under fire because the cost of their megawatt generation was more than they thought it would. But to be fair to them, Everything they had to do was first of its kind. And so mm -hmm. it's like the first pharmaceutical drug cost millions and the second one costs nothing. Um, and so they got penalized for that. But they, if there was an infrastructure in place within the country to support everything they did and manufacture the fuel and parts that they needed, it would have been an order of magnitude cheaper for a start. And, uh -huh. and logically, nuclear should be the cheapest form of energy. Um, but you have all your capital costs up front, which can really distort that picture. Right, and right, right. In big projects, like 70% of your overall costs might be financing costs related to that big upfront capital cost. Well, you know, one of the things, it seems to me that you, from a PR perspective, a marketing perspective, that there's a, there's a wide open field of opportunity on one side of this equation that I don't think has been well capitalized upon. You know, first of all, I think you can make us, you already made a case for, for green, um, what would you say? For, for that, that nuclear power can be is a very green form of energy, at least in principle, especially when it's safely delivered in the form that you're delivering it. 
And uh, you made a case for reliability and portability and all that. But there's another case that's just begging to be made, even additionally on the environmental front. And so the data is quite clear that if you get people around the world up to the point where they're producing about $5,000 in US dollars a year in GDP, they start to take a long-term view of the future. They become environmentally aware. And that's because they're not scrabbling around in the dirt, burning dung, trying to figure out where the next meal is coming from and, and willing to burn up and eat everything around them so they don't starve. So we, we, it, it's clear that if you get people, we know that rich companies, get, rich countries get cleaner. That's what happens. And so obvious, and we also think at least that absolute privation and poverty is bad because do we really want starving people and stunted children and and all the misery that goes along with that. And so there's this opening, it seems to me, for people who are in a position to provide at scale inexpensive energy to say, look, we can feed the world's poor because there's a direct relationship between energy and wealth, like more direct than anything else. Energy equals wealth. And now we can make all the poor people in the world rich in a non-zero sum manner. And as soon as we did that, they'd start to care about the environment. So like, where's where? what's the problem with that?